Welcome back to our very special session, our keynote address on cyberspace and the idea of virtual architecture. Joining us now is Mr. Patrick Schumacher, Principal Architect, Zaha Hadid Architects. I'd like to hand over to him for this special session. Sir? Hello, everybody. I'm speaking from London. I will speak about 20 minutes. So I'm very happy to be invited for that. It's, I'm thinking a lot recently, so I have no work to show because we're I will be talking about ideas of reorientation, new opportunities which are coming towards us architects as a discipline. And the way I want to start is saying that um, we as Zahadid architects, but also we as architects, thinking ourselves as part of a big design community of designers across all the design disciplines. And that's important to notice that it's you should think about it, this has been like this throughout the 20th century already. If you think about the Bauhaus, we have urban design, architecture, interior design, fashion, product design, but also importantly, graphic design. And I want to start here because I think that this is a moment where architecture can make a step forward and expand. I mean, architects come on and take over the internet design, if you like. That in the last um, 30 years um, or 25 years when the internet started off, uh, became a domain of graphic designers who then became kind of interaction graphic designers. But at the beginning of the internet, I'm not sure if some of you remember there was the opportunity and was the excitement about the idea that architects could step up as well and that the internet would not be based on an, the analogy of the magazine uh, with, with pages and content distributed in the kind of sequences of pages or filing systems with folders and drop down menus, etc but would be uh, conceived more spatially in, in the analogy of buildings and cities with various spaces and the navigation which is more three-dimensional so that is the idea of cyberspace which was formulated uh, through novels and and also theoretical treatises and, and and articles in the 1980s so when i was a young architect the, uh, i had actually started <laughs> offline and the internet, of course, came on, come through only in the early 90s. And I was at the time uh, just uh, starting to become an assistant professor in Berlin. And in 94, I was uh, setting a, the theme of uh, cyberspace in my architectural design studio. And now I'm remembering that I think the moment is coming now to make that real and make that happen for a number of reasons. It, ha it has been coming for quite a while, but I think the COVID. 19 experience and home working and remote working and telecommunication taking over more and more uh, of the uh, of our time but also of our investment that becomes a reality so, so this is a moment of cyberspace it's a moment of the matrix if you like and uh, thinking back again in the uh, in the early 90s when i started the project you know the internet you know was all just uh, white letters on black backgrounds and addresses and typing and and um, uh, so at the time there was a project of the virtual college. And it's interesting that this is prescient as well um, because all the universities are now operating online. So actually not only in terms of our architectural practice, we are all working from home and continuously using video conferencing like Zoom and other tools, um, um, go to meeting, Microsoft Teams, et cetera. And we've been using that before to some extent, but now it's taken totally over. Um, and also, but also at school. I mean, I'm teaching at the AA and I've been participating in various reviews and with other schools of architecture. All of that is online. And everything is now brought to this kind of simple grid, uh, simple um, Zoom grid. And it's kind of disappointing, isn't it? It's that, that all we've got is a grid of faces, a grid of names, and the participants, uh, maybe 25 on the page, and then we have a lot of hidden participants. So the idea of um, uh, doing something with that is, of course, very, very important. And the investments are flowing in. If you look at Zoom's share prices have been skyrocketing 
In one day, it was even 45% increase in a single day. So we're having money flowing in, we're having time, resources, demand flowing into the space. And, uh, t- and it's also at the same time, it's sort of real uh, real estate projects are kind of halted, stopping their wait and seek. So that the, the funding which we used to go there might go into cyberspace projects or into digital uh, infrastructure, but also digital tooling. So that's, I think, very important. But I think the, uh, the, the essential task of all designers is actually equivalent. That's why I'm talking about all designers sharing the discourse. It's all about form and content, about, um, <laughs> you know, and more specifically, it's all about, I think in the contemporary world, you know, all designers framing communicative interaction. So you can frame that by, by designing a, a, a real space in which you gather and frame and and, and, and give a certain structure to an interaction event and it's, it's contextualized in a, in, a, in, a, in a building and you navigate towards this or you can frame uh, <clears throat> communicative interaction virtually through either through a simple typing interface I mean not very uh, effective or through a kind of tool like Zoom. You also have to navigate to these events I mean you might have lists and you might calendar entries but you might also want to browse the whole world of uh, webinars and online seminars, um, and so so we can imagine. I think that that cyberspace that that our expertise of uh, which we've developed over the years of 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 distributing, separating, connecting, and gathering and structuring a whole menu of interaction o- opportunities, which usually find distributed in buildings or in cities or in buildings nearly as cities, like we've been recently developing. And the same pressures, co- uh, of course, continue in the new world. And there's not only a world imposed by COVID, there's also a world we're discovering because of COVID, we're discovering the advantages and the opportunities. And we suddenly realize that technology has evolved further and that it can cope with the situation. So it is, even if the pandemic uh, recedes, I think these lessons will be learned. We're already talking about many corporations, including ourselves, maintaining home working to a large extent. It is not going to be 100%, but maybe it's 20%, 30%. So I believe that the cities and buildings and, and corporate campuses and university campuses will not become obsolete, but I think that will be augmented and there will be partial participation virtually for sure. And then you can also, once you have that, also invite more participants. So you have more concentration um, in these event spaces. So what I'm foreseeing is not a full, full on substitution of real real estate with virtual real estate, but that we have um, we have mixed offerings. We have um, events which are partly uh, physical co-presence, but then also augmented with, with, with virtual presences. We have some of us meeting and then the meeting is expanded with respect to um, um, virtual participants, we can, we have the same idea of, uh, we need to communicate, of course, to share ideas, exchange information, make collective decisions, complex decisions, because we're living in this world where work has become for nearly for, potentially actually for everybody, creative work, where the actual physical production is done with robotics, with machines, uh, with, with, with um, uh, technical systems, setting us free, not chained to the assembly line, setting us free to continue to reprogram these robotic assembly lines. And that has an enormous amount of innovation, which is, can be absorbed by these technical systems. But there's also, of course, software as service. So again, there's an, nearly an infinite amount of innovation capacity possible because we can not only just reprogram robots, but we can just re-upload and update the software as service tools uh, apps, etc. So that amount of innovation absorption capacity of that technological civilization is so large that literally everybody becomes creative, but that means we also need to communicate. We need to have research and development c- communications intensified. We need to bring in the marketing, the market research. We need to bring in finance. And all of these are knowledge economy um, and, and, the, and the legal frameworks, the contracting for all of that, 
that means very, very intensive um, for every new product, for every new sequence, for every new app, for every new um, entertainment venture, etc. So that means this increase of communication was didn't mean previously that we concentrate in urban urban centers and that we that we co-locate and these co-location synergies were very very important that we live in a cluster industry cluster with where we know now in London for instance with all the architects clustering around Clerkenwell we have there but also engineers clustering photographers galleries the schools of architecture as close by there's a whole network in walking distance hopefully and you have this and you share also all the social space, the pub, bars, clubs, uh, opening events. And, 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 and that should continue to some extent and will, but we will also have to double this up with digital twin cities, the digital twin, let's say, university campuses. And if you visit a university, you can do that in person or you can do that virtually. And there should be synergies also of learning, of understanding. There should be the same kind of navigation systems. And I think it's important to realize that architecture in this sense of framing communications, of orienting people, of guiding them, of gathering them, of, of telling them what's happening where and which protocols of interactions are at play in a, in a seminar versus in a workshop versus a lecture versus a private gathering, a social chat. So they have also different, we need to distinguish all these situations. There are so many of them that need to be ordered, distributed, and they need to be indicated and, and understood and basically that's a semiology project that's a project of 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 demarcating not only and ordering but also of making legible through a visual spatial code and of course that's also what dominates in the cyberspace so i've been working on architectural semiology for a long time and i think it's particularly relevant in the knowledge economy in the in an economy of communication where our lives are dynamic and, and, and versatile, but it, the idea actually came from my first speculation about cyberspace, because cyberspace, of course, means that, that these spaces are, have, they, they indicate through their ex position as well as through their color, exterior and shape, uh, what's going to take place, what contents you can find there, either the content of, a, of an interaction or the content also of stored knowledges whether it's library uh, items, movie items, etc. So the classification and, and retrieval and ordering of elements, be there social interaction or other elements you need, resources you need, is a semiological project. And, and maybe I want to, I'm not sure how much time I have more, but I want to kind of wrap up on saying that the whole um, style and uh, methodology and spirit of parametricism, which is about more complex layering of interactions uh, in, in dense urban spaces could also be the, the intense layering of interactions in virtual spaces so that you have higher levels of complexity and maintain legibility in the face of complexity that you have not only separate spaces, you have overlapping and multiply encoded spaces, you have multiple audience visiting and I mean, the thing is interesting for me, so, so the and, and gradients, gradual, uh, um, and, and, you know, variety rather than simple categories, all of these challenges with parametricism as a style with a lot of versatility and fluid geometries and, and ideas like overlap and gradients can also bring to the virtual space. And I think what is interesting is to remember virtual space is coming heavily. It's been tested out and a lot of people have these virtual games they occupy. So you have also playful metaverses like Somnium Space or you have um, Decentraland where you actually have virtual worlds where you, you already also can build participatory design where you can purchase real estate, so location matters, location, 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 who you're close to and which are populated by avatars. All of that at the moment is toy-like, playful, you have a whole generation of people, you know, in VR gaming, multi-user games, and they're already becoming not only just distractions and shooting games, but they can also social interaction spaces. They are becoming the new kind of social uh, media platforms. And that's why you have also Zuckerberg, Facebook, you know, with this Oculus uh, uh, utilization, uh, homing in on that space. Google coming in with Google Glasses, because I also think it's going to be augmented reality. So when we walk through our 
if the if the if the re real real estate is kind of matched up, extended, and overlapped with the digital twin or versions mutated, expanded digital twinning, then you can also overlay that and augment. And now we're walking all around with Google glasses, maybe with these kind of visors, the beautiful. Um, uh, designer visors uh, standing in from instead of masks, you can actually then enhance your face, you project, and you have kind of augmented screen where you continuously feed in information and you occupy real and virtual worlds together. So I have a research project in the uh, in in London at Zadi Architects, but also using the AA Design Research Lab to explore these issues. Uh, at the moment. So we're switching from a world where we have been actually using avatars and simulations and agent-based modeling to populate uh, simulated real spaces. This transitions now in simulating virtual spaces and real spaces. This is an exciting moment for us. And somehow I feel that <clears throat> my career with the emphasis on organizations and semiology on agent-based simulations and the idea of social processes being what is shaped and channeled in architecture sets me up and my teams to 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 push into that space, which I think where where a lot of energy, a lot of resources were flowing. And I think it's an exciting time and invite everybody to kind of think about this as well, because we as architects can do this. We are modeling these, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, virtual worlds already before they're being constructed, but maybe some of them will only be constructed and other will continue to live as virtual spaces. And we have been asked a number of times uh, to do um, movie sets and do creating worlds for, for cinema. And a lot of our architectural students are going into, into this kind of media world already. So there's a symbiosis, a synergy um, uh, there, which, which we can build on. So what I'm saying simply, and that's my final sentence on this one, we will remain in charge of the real world, but the real world will become an augmented and interfused and mixed reality, virtual, real. And we will substitute for the graphic designers who've been, who've been kind of owning the internet for so, so long and will be the architects. Uh, and anyway, all the design disciplines will come together in the end. And uh, as we are doing at Zardin Architects as well, actually. So that's my pitch, uh, my my vision. And um, I'm not sure if there's interaction, uh, let's say Q&A now uh, to the following of this, but here we go. Cyberspace is coming. Thank you so very much, Mr. Schumacher. And I think after that fabulous session, sadly, we're out of time. Uh, for any questions, uh, but in case uh, uh, our team will be more than happy to send those questions around and that's how our viewers will get their answers. So once again, I'd like to thank you for joining us. Here's wishing you safety and more. It's my pleasure and thank you for giving me that platform. And as we thank Mr. Schumacher for joining us right here, yet another uh, keynote address will be coming forth for all of you. But till then, may I once again encourage you to please join us in the lobby area visit our partner booths, get to know more about them and network with them till we introduce our next speaker in the next few minutes. Thank you. Thank you.